And welcome back, everyone, for a divisional round of the 2019-2020 NFL season. I went 3-1 against the spread last week. Philadelphia quarterback Carson Wentz bumped his head and got taken out of the game pretty early, so we didn't have a chance in that game. You know, the Eagles were actually, uh, uh, by the time the, game, uh, the kickoff started, they were actually the favorite in that game. The uh, spread had been going back and forth all week, but by kickoff time, the Eagles were favored. So all four of the dogs covered last week, three of the four won outright. And I think the under happened in all four of those games. Wow, how about that? Anyways, with that in mind, here are my picks for the divisional round. Our first game, and I'm smiling, is because my Minnesota Vikings are going to San Francisco, where the 49ers are seven point favorites at home. The total in this game is 44. Uh, both these teams are pretty similar. Good defenses, well-balanced offenses. Let's talk about maybe the negatives of each team. For Minnesota, it's going to be back-to-back -back road games. It's hard to win on the road in the NFL as it is, let alone back-to-back, -back, let alone against a quality team, a, a playoff team. A, they're also going to be playing on grass. Minnesota's a dome team, and it's a short week for Minnesota. They play Sunday, now it's a Saturday game. Uh, the Vikings don't really have a good record going back 20 years or so. Playing in San Francisco, I, I, I don't know. Like they play, play every six years there, so how much that makes a difference, I don't know. Uh, what could go wrong for San Francisco? Well, here's a team that, yes, they're 13 and three. They were four and 12 last year, so it's quite a jump. Are are they really a 13 and three team, or are they closer to? They're not a four and 12 team. Maybe uh, the numbers last year weren't reflective, and maybe the numbers this year aren't quite reflective. They, they uh, missed Jimmy Garoppolo most of the season last last year, but. I'll get to him in a second. What could go wrong for San Francisco is that they don't have any playoff experience. This is a young team. I don't think they've made the playoffs in about five years. And playoff experience is very important, especially for the quarterbacks. Um, let's see what happened last week. Ryan Tannehill actually made his first start uh, in the playoffs. He won, oddly enough, against New England, a team that always eats up uh, first-time quarterbacks and whatnot. But, you know, in that game, he wasn't really asked to do much. He only threw the ball like 14, 15 times. I can't even remember. It was mostly a running game. And, and Tannehill is an older guy who's actually played and beaten the uh, Patriots. So you can't really count him. Carson Wentz, that was his first playoff game, despite the fact that Philadelphia's been in the, into the playoffs. But he, he, like I said, he, he bumped his head, got the concussion. But uh, who are some of the other guys who lost? Uh, Josh Allen, it was his first start. Now, he, Josh Allen might not be the best quarterback, uh, but that was a very good defense. He played Deshaun Watson. Now, Deshaun Watson last year lost his first start um, against Indianapolis, and that was at home. Uh, other guys who lost, Lamar Jackson, this year's MVP, he lost his first game at home. I think that was against the Chargers. Mitch Trubisky for uh, Chicago lost last year. Now, Trubisky is not, not the best quarterback in the world, but Remember, the Chicago Bears had that really, really good defense. He didn't have to do too much, but still, he lost his first game uh, in the playoffs. Jared Goff did. You know, uh, the Rams went to the Super Bowl last year, but the year before, Jared Goff's first uh, time in the, in the playoffs, he actually lost. Well, this is Jimmy G's first time as well. And uh, he did play Minnesota last year and lost. Mind you, that was in Minnesota. My point is this. Uh, there's a lot of things against Minnesota, but one of the major things is against San Francisco. And maybe I'm being a bit of a homer, but I don't care. I'm going to predict that my Minnesota Vikings are going to win this game 24 to 20. So take Minnesota straight up, take Minnesota against the spread. And I'm not really, I don't really have a play on the under. I have it actually at that number. So do whatever you like. Actually, I'm not going to bet that, but take Minnesota to win. Sorry to my nephew. He's a big. Niners fan. The second game has the Tennessee Titans going to Baltimore, where the Ravens are 10-point favorites at home. The total in this game is 47. Wow, the Titans did it. They slew the dragon. They beat New England Patriots last week. Um, I mentioned how Ryan Tannehill, that was his first playoff game, and he won. Well, you know, he, Ryan Tannehill wasn't asked to do very much. He, he, he threw the ball like uh, 14, 15 times, like I said, and they, they ran the ball. 
Now, New England, I've been seeing for years, is not very good at running the ball. Statistically, they they look good this year, but uh, when you look at it, yeah, the teams were the quarterbacks that they played. They weren't very good. I mentioned that in my video last week. Uh, they, they didn't have to respect the pass. They could stop the run, and it, it, it sort of uh, skewed the numbers a lot. And I, I think the secondary for New England is what's really good about that defense. And with Baltimore, it's the same thing. You look at the numbers. Well, the Ravens didn't give up very many yards on on the ground. It's because they were always winning by several touchdowns. When you look at it, yards per carry they are susceptible to the run. And that's what Tannehill uh, and the Titans do. They, they run the ball. Now, because the secondary isn't as good as the uh, Patriots secondary, Tannehill will also be able to throw the ball a little bit more. That being said, obviously the Ravens' offense is a juggernaut, and they're going to score a lot of points. I'm just saying Tennessee, I, I believe, will be able to hang with Baltimore. They're not going to get blown out. Ultimately, I think the Ravens will win this game. And it should be a pretty high scoring game. I'm going to predict the score in this game to be Baltimore 33, Tennessee 27. So take the Baltimore Ravens straight up, take the Tennessee Titans against the spread, and take over the 47. The next game is the first of the Sunday games as the Houston Texans go to Kansas City where the Chiefs are nine and a half point favorites at home. The total in this game is 51. Last week I said that the Houston Texans would beat Buffalo because Buffalo couldn't score enough points to beat Houston. In Houston's six losses, five of them, the other team scored 30 points. And Buffalo certainly couldn't. Well, this week they play a team that definitely can score 30 points or more. I think um, the, the Chiefs scored 30 points or more nine times this season. Another thing about Kansas City is that the defense is better than you think, and they got better as the season progressed. They held several teams uh, to single digits down the stretch. Uh, it's a tough, tough place to play as well as in Kansas City, especially um, in this time of the year. Uh, I think there's always one route of the divisional round, and this will be it. I'm going to predict the score. Kansas City 31, Houston 16. So. Take Kansas City straight up. Take Kansas City against the spread. And take under the total, although I'm not going to bet this total. And the fourth game is the one that I think is the easiest to handicap. That's the Seattle Seahawks go to Green Bay, where the Packers are four and a half point favorites at home. The total in this game is now 46 and a half. I'll get right to the point. I think this game is going to go right down to the wire and it's going to be won by a field goal. Whoever wins it is, uh, it's, it's up to the football gods. Although, a couple of things we can think about. Lambo is really tough at home, um, especially in January. However, the Seattle Seahawks were seven and one on the road in the regular season and they won last week on the road again. So it's like the immovable force means the unstoppable object. That being said, there's a funny thing about these two teams. In the last 14 games that they've played each other, the home team has won 13 times. As a matter of fact, the only time I looked it up, Green Bay won one of the games in, uh, in Seattle. I think in 2008, Seattle was terrible that year. And I think they were down to their uh, scrub quarterback. But it's 13-1 and one at home. I think the Packers will pull it off. But I, like I said, it should come down to a last second field goal. I'm going to predict the score in this game to be Green Bay 23 and Seattle 20. So take Green Bay straight up, take Seattle against the spread, and take under the 46 and a half. All right, here's my Let's Take the Man's Money party play and my six-game, six-point teaser play. We'll only do six games. We did eight last week for fun, and uh, I used combinations of, of them, and I'm sure you did, but uh, we'll, we'll keep it at six. For the party play, we'll take Minnesota plus seven, Tennessee plus 10, Kansas City minus nine and a half, Seattle plus four and a half. We'll take over 47 in the Tennessee-Baltimore game and under 46 and a half in the Seattle-Green Bay game. A $25 bet will get us $1,162.29. And for the second party, we're going to do exactly the same, except we're going to take Minnesota on the money line. Yes, we are. A $25 bet will get us $2,130.86. 
And for the teaser play, we'll take Minnesota plus 13, Tennessee plus 16, Kansas City minus 3.5, Seattle plus 10.5. We'll take over 41 in the Tennessee-Baltimore game and under 52.5 in the Seattle-Green Bay game. A $25 bet will get us $175. Good luck. Okay, and those are my picks for the divisional round of the 2019-2020 NFL season. Now, I am going on vacation for the next three weeks. I don't think I'll be doing a video for the conference final order of the Super Bowl for the first time in like 10 years. I'll be trekking through the Amazon in South America. Well, I don't know what my wife's got me um, uh, what's on the itinerary, but I won't be around a computer, I'm pretty sure. I won't have internet access for the next little while. So this is probably my last video for this year. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing these videos next year. I'm still debating, probably not. This may be my last video uh, prognosticating. I, maybe we'll see. I'd like to thank all of you though for watching these videos, for subscribing, commenting, uh, giving me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. It makes it, doing these videos so much fun. I'd like to thank all of the other NFL YouTube prognosticators and uh, there's a link below to our Facebook page. These guys are great. Check out all their channels. They do really great work. And it's a great community. And I hope you can support them. Special thanks to my good buddy, Billy B, who joined me most of the year for these videos. It's been a lot of fun collaborating with, with Billy. So whether or not I come back next year, uh, we'll see. But I, I will say one thing. For the Geo Knows channel, I am Geo. You know what? Let's take the man's money.